What's up, guys? Today we're talking about terms, philosophy, and approach to the game that I have as a coach that we have cultivated as a culture in the JS Discord and the JS Academy. Um, this video is, there, there's two main reasons I'm putting this out. I'm putting this out, one, as an introduction video to new people coming into the academy. So if you are joining the academy, that's why you're checking this out. Welcome, happy to have you. I'm gonna talk about my philosophies as a coach and our philosophies as an academy and in a community that have gotten us all to see good results in the first six months of this thing running. And the second reason is, I just want to share my philosophy as a coach and as the guy who went from gold to masters and the guy who, you know, was rank one Annie for like half of all of last season, all these things, a lot of people are interested in what, what are your philosophies, what allowed you to do those things and how do you teach those things as a coach, right? So. Wherever you're checking out the video, welcome and let's talk about it. I'm gonna go down each bullet point one by one and we're gonna start from the top and we're just gonna start with the out of game. Now the out of game is just real life stuff, right? And I believe that to be successful in the game, you have to have a solid foundation out of the game, right? That means you have to, uh, you have to handle your sleeping habits, you have to eat well, you have to exercise, you have to do your homework, Right, you have to go do your homework. It's one of the first things uh, my challenger mid lane collegiate, uh, collegiate mid laner told us when we first showed up was do your damn homework because if you don't, it's gonna loom over your head all day, and you're not gonna be able to express yourself. Right. So oftentimes, you know, and a lot of this stuff is out of my pay grade to fix. Right. I am not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a like health coach or, or exercise coach or anything. But I do know. Everything in the game is going to be a hundred times harder for every out of game thing that isn't going well, right? So I know a lot of people do use League as an escape and that's okay, but you gotta understand if you wanna make real progress and you want to push yourself, you have to take care of yourself as best as you can in your other aspects of life as well. So the out of game is super important. You gotta make sure you have a healthy mindset in life or, or you will not be able to express yourself on League in a healthy manner. Lane phase first. Now, I believe that 80% of solo queue progress below masters. So if you're masters tier uh, or grandmasters, this isn't true, but below masters up to the top 0.01% of the player base, 80% of the game learned through lane phase and we should spend most of our time on lane phase, right? Now this is for a lot of reasons and the biggest reason is that lane phase dictates how easy the rest of the game is. If you play well in lane phase, mid and late game are really, really easy because you're just up income, right? I always use the example of if you put me against Faker and you give me three items on him, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what's going to happen, I'll beat him every single time because nothing outscales income, right? League is a game of income. It's a game of gold and experience. That's what it's about. It's all about optimizing our income. Well, you do that by getting really good at lane phase. Now, the second reason we have a lane phase first mentality is because lane phase is the part of the game where you have the most responsibility especially if you're playing top, mid, jungle, or support. ADC is the one unique one where you have like a lot less agency in lane phase than the other roles. Um, so you actually would spend a little bit more time on team fighting and skirmishing and whatnot. But for all the other roles and even still for ADC quite a bit, lane phase is where you are the most responsible. If you're playing mid or top, if you get solo killed, it's mostly on you. If you die to a gank, it's your job to track the jungler. If you die to a roam, whatever, whatever, you guys get the point. If you're up CS, whatever, if you're behind camps as a jungler, if you're behind objectives, that's mostly on you. Of course, there are exceptions. Sometimes we, let's say you're playing mid and your jungle is getting gapped and your bot lane's getting gapped. So you have the enemy jungle and support in your lane all the time. You may end up being like having to go even there and that can be the best possible scenario for you. But even that is a positive impact if you're pulling people to your lane. Some games you're going to lose, but you have control over how you have a positive impact, especially in the beginning. Now, the third reason I have a really heavily lane phase first mentality is because lane phase teaches you how to play the game, right? If you know how to last it, if you know how to trade, if you know how to 
uh, if you know how to fight, if you know the champion matchups, you'll be able to map that onto skirmishing and onto team fighting and onto the other parts of the game. Also, things like macro are a lot more formulaic. You can just tell somebody, hey, as a split pusher, this is how you split push. When the objective spawn and you go to the other side and you push the lane and it's like, now you understand split pushing. Lane phase and fighting and things like this require a little bit more feeling, a little bit more um, experience in execution, and you get that through lane phase, right? So I often tell people, if you're not winning lane phase, 80% of your games, eight out of 10 of your games, and by that, I mean, you have to have a substantial gold lead at 10 and 15 minutes, then you need to work on lane phase first. And in the academy, we often do that. Uh, we had this thing called the review ending mistake, which is something where we will actually end the review when the lane phase mistakes become too egregious because it's not even worth looking at the rest of the game if you just didn't mess up lane so bad or if you were ahead more gold here when the opportunity was given to you. And again, think about a team fight in the late game, right? Let's say it's 35 minutes and Baron is spawning and you guys are going to, to go fight a Baron and you guys like lose the smite and then the game's really hard. A lot of people will come to me and say, well, JS, how can I win this game at 35 minutes? And that's the wrong question. Because if all 10 people are trying to get that, you're only one out of 10 people trying to get that. Your impact is relatively small. The question is, why were you not ahead 5,000 gold at 15 minutes so that there wasn't even a Baron fight at 35 minutes? That is much, much, much more important. So that's a really, really important philosophy that I have as a coach and we have as an academy. Solo queue is a competition and deserves respect. Solo queue is a competition and as a competition deserves respect. Now I often use the, uh, the analogy of like a martial art, right? Like let's say we're doing karate and you start at a white belt. You don't expect to go from a white belt to a black belt in a day or a week or a month. You understand it may take years. League of Legends, when we're talking about climbing ranked solo queue, is the same thing. It's not like a video game where you just put in X amount of time and you get Y amount of reward. It's not like that. And it's also not, you know, these scales are very short. Usually in a lot of video games, let's say you're playing a single player RPG. If you put in one week of grinding, you kind of are super, super strong, right? And you beat the game, right? If you play the game nonstop for a week, you just beat the game. In League, it's more like you have to take time, a long time, and effort, and then that will result in progress, right? And so the time frames are much more similar to a real competition, like karate, like chess, like a real sport, than it is like any other video game, right? You're not gonna go from silver to masters in a week or a month. I often get people at the end of every season, they're like, JS, can you take me to diamond? And they're like bronze three, and they've been bronze three for three years. They're like, you're, you're a cool coach. You went from gold to masters in a year. Uh, you can take me to diamond. And I'm like, no, I can't, right? It's not possible in two months. Have some respect for the game because it's a competition, right? So one of the biggest things we talk about in the academy and we make sure we facilitate is a respect for understanding it's a competition, right? You will not climb in a day, even if you're learning every day. Or, or you're learning every game, you may not have the rank to show for it at the end of the day. If you're learning every day, you may not have the rank after a week, right? It takes time. It takes pushing yourself and things. It's very uh, cumulative, right? You, you take a lot of small things that add up to your next rank jump, right? It's not you just learn one thing and then you gain 10 LP and then you learn one thing, you gain 10 LP. No, you're gonna like learn one thing. You're gonna go up and down and you're gonna keep going up and down and then you're gonna learn lots of things and over time, they're all gonna click and then you shoot up to your next rank. Right, and then you shoot up, and that's kind of how climbing goes, right? If we draw the graph, you kind of like you kind of chill, you kind of chill, you go up a little bit, you go down a little bit, and then things kind of click, and you chill, and then you and then you kind of you're back to chilling a little bit. Maybe you go down because maybe this is a little bit lucky, and then you chill here, and then you boom, and then you go right up again, right? And that's what climbing's like, and this all happens over the course of years, not weeks or months, right? League is a competition and it deserves respect as such. Too many, uh, I, I don't wanna say kids, but it, it's often too many inexperienced people come into the game with kind of these expectations of it being like a different game, or that since it's a video game, it'll be much quicker. 
And it's like, no, it still takes time and work and effort and you still have to push yourself for a long time. League is a thing you can express yourself and push yourself over years, not just a week or a month. You won't see the results in that time frame. Focus on cutting out bad losses first. Now, I often view rank or, or league, creating a good league game, like sculpting a, a giant chunk of marble right? When we have this giant chunk of marble, we start with a big square at first. Now we've got to start taking chunks off. Boom, slice a chunk off. Boom, slice a chunk off. And then as you slice these chunks off, you start to gain a little bit of a person, right? And here's the arm. I know it looks really bad. And then now we could say like, this is like a gold level sculpture. Well, now in gold, we're going to take some, we're going to take some slightly smaller chunks off, right? The, the, the slices are going to be a little bit a little bit smaller, a little bit more precise, right? And then, and then eventually that's how we get to platinum. And then in platinum, we'll start to really refine some spots, right? And then in masters, we'll start to really, really make sure one part of it is perfect. Too many times a client will come to me and they'll have a really good like hand and they'll be like, JS, the hand of my sculpture is really, really good, but I want you to, to figure out, I want you to make it perfect when the rest of the sculpture is not even started yet. Right. And that's when you get somebody in like, that's when you get a platinum player who may have grandmaster or maybe even challenger mechanics or understanding of a champion or understanding of an idea. But since they haven't started the rest of their sculpture and the rest of their sculpture is bronze level because they haven't even started it, or it's usually not this extreme, but you guys get the point. We need to fix the bronze stuff first because it's much easier to take those big broad slices than it is to make something perfect, right? To make something perfect, that could take years and years and years, but the big slices are relatively quick, right? So we always want to focus on the games where we perform the worst because those games show you where your sculpture is the least, uh, the least refined, right? So you take the least refined part and you get rid of that and you chop that out first, then we go to the next ones. Another part of this is understanding that your your rank is an average, right? If you are ranked platinum four, right? That means you do some things higher than platinum. You may do some things at a diamond level. Or let's take my rank, for example. At, at the end of last season, I did like Masters 400 LP. Right on the brink of Grandmaster. I've, I think I peaked like five games away or, or seven games away, somewhere in there. That means I do some things on a Grandmaster, even challenger level right? I understand Annie better than anybody in all of North America, right? I understand some things better than anybody in our region at all, but I'm also doing some things at a diamond level that I need to fix, right? Now, am I going to waste my time refining the thing that I'm already better than everybody else at? No, that's ridiculous, right? I'm going to fix the things that are so egregiously bad. They're holding me back. And I actually have some things in mind for me. I have some very specific examples, but your ranks are very similar to this, right? When I was a gold player, it was very similar. I did some things at a platinum level, right? But also I did a lot of things at like a silver or bronze level. And to get to platinum, all I had to do was cut out the bronze stuff. Well, on my way to platinum, once I hit platinum, it's like, oh, I actually do some things at a diamond level now, but I still have some things left in, in gold. And then you got to fix those things. And that's how we climb. We focus on our worst losses first. Now this next one is extreme ownership. And this is just saying we always focus on what we can control. Our job in League of Legends is to understand first that we do have control. Now, this isn't really as bad of as a narrative as it used to be. People used to think that like ELO hell exists and that you could legitimately get stuck in places. You can't. And most people understand that now, right? Um, ELO boosting just disproved that pretty quickly, right? You can give me anybody's account in any ELO and I can do the things that I do and I can get it up to masters with a 70% win rate or higher, right? 70% is kind of the low end or higher very quickly, right? It can, it could be very bad MMR. It can be, it can be, I, I remember back when I did boost, I don't anymore, but two years ago, whatever, I was a high school student, whatever. Um, I had an account that was plus 10 minus 20 and the dude was adamant that it was unclimbable and i took it from bronze two i believe to gold four and by the end of it it was gaining plus 16 minus 15 so it was fixed it wasn't great in literally one day one day 
And he told me for months it wasn't fixable. For months and months and months he told me it wasn't fixable. How was I able to do it in one day? Well, it's because I have control, right? Um, so first thing, we do have control over the outcome of our games. Now, the second thing is, is we really have to understand and tell ourselves it's our job to take responsibility for the things we have control over, right? So we do have control over stuff. It's your job to figure out what that is, right? Because you may not control whether or not you win or lose this game, but you can control how well you did in lane, how well you last hit, how tight your mechanics were, the opportunities you were looking for, the way you played the fights, your APM, your information gathering, your map awareness, your F keys. There's a million skills. There, there, there's, a, there's a practically infinite amount of skills that we can always be working on, right? And the more you work on those, the more you can express that you're better than your opponent, the more that you will win, right? So it's our job to figure out the things we need to take responsibility for. Now, going hand in hand with this is this kind of venting about bad teammates is unproductive point. We actually have a rule in the academy that you cannot vent in the academy channels about teammates because it's unproductive. It's so ridiculous. Imagine losing a game and having an 0-30 bot lane and then tabbing out, going to your friend and spending time typing out, oh, my bot lane was 0-30. All of that time is wasted because you made mistakes. And if you want to win the next game, you focus on the mistakes you made and you work on pushing yourself rather than complaining about the person that you'll never see again. It's unproductive and it facilitates a victim mindset. Yes, you're going to lose games because of bad teammates. There's no getting around that. Everybody does, even the best players. However, it's your responsibility to make yourself, to, to express your best self. Is complaining about somebody else expressing your best self? No, you're creating friction between you and your best self because you're not allowing yourself to focus on you. You're going to get into some games. That's a part of League of Legends. You can also improve from every game if you choose to, right? Improvement is a lot in your own, is your own choice. The amount of stuff you take out of your games is your own choice. Okay, so this was kind of some philosophies that I have as a coach and introduction to the JS Academy philosophy. I hope you guys appreciated this video. Let me know if there are things you guys disagreed about or things you guys have questions on and y'all made it to the end of a JS video so you guys already know. Comment 18 minutes and I will go give you that little heart. I appreciate you guys checking this one out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>